I trust God. Yes. Yes. This morning, the Word of God is going to come from a passage uh, from a book that we've all learned from young children. But the subject this morning, a job for Joseph. Mm. Listen to this now. Right. A job for Joseph. Mm. Now, we all know the story about Joseph. We're mm. going to go into it a little bit more detail today. The, the, the story of Job starts out when, when the Bible talks about him being just an upright man. Right. And it goes on from there, a few verses down, it talks about when the, when the sons of the Lord gathered together. Mm -hmm. And it says the Satan was among them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord asked Satan, what you been doing? Mm -hmm. yeah, paraphrase it now. I've been going to and fro. And the Lord said, have you considered yeah. my servant Job? Yes. Come on now. Yes. Now, stop right there. Yes. And instead of Job, let's just go oh, put in God. your name. Right. In this case, I, I'm going to put in Cecil. Mm -hmm. Satan running around to and fro on the earth. And when the sons of man gather together, He's among them, and the Lord asked him, What you been doing? Mm -hmm. I've been going to and fro and saying to you, I ain't been impressed either. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Have you considered my servant Caesar? Right, well, come on. We think about it. And we think about how there are times in our lives when, you know, Lord, give me patience. Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. But if you want it, you got to lose. Amen. Things are given, but they're not given easily. Amen. In this world, you've got to earn. Amen. You've got to do thus, say the Lord, mm -hmm. that the Lord would entrust you with patience with healing, <clears throat> with peace. So, we start on the first chapter, seventh verse, and we go to seven and eight. And it reads, And the Lord said to Satan, What's coming thou? Satan answered, The Lord said, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, and there's none like him in the earth, perfect, not that man, one that feared God and the shoe of evil. We go down to the 21st verse, and it reads, and it said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, naked shall I return there. And the Lord gave, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this don't sin not, nor that he charge God to right. Between these verses, between the 8th verse and the 21st verse, we find that Job lost. Now, I could individually tell you that he lost children, he lost property, but Job lost all the things that, see, wow. A lot of us who are parents understand when, when Job was out there praying, his children was out there in party. Yeah. Yeah. But Job was praying for them while they were out there in the world. Just like I pray for my children, I, 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 I gave them a foundation of God. But I don't know what they're doing when they're away from me. Because when I was away from my mother, I did some things that I shouldn't have been doing. So I pray for them. Just like Job prayed for him. But they lost their life. Job's servants came in and they came one after the other telling him how Satan that came in and ravaged him. Took away his children. Took away his property. And Job as the word says in all this Job sin not to charge God to him. He lost his word of possession. He lost his children. But he still did not foolishly 
charge God with. Mm -hmm. Now, Job was a man of God. And if you think about it, there are times in our life when we lose mother, father, child, we blame God. But well, what was God doing when my child was being raped or my child was being murdered? What was God doing when cancer came and ravaged my mother? When cancer came and took my father's mind? What was God doing? Don't be do that. For in the first verse, God told him, he's upright. All right, all right. Caesar's an upright man. But then Satan comes back and Satan goes against God. Look, says to God, wait, what has he got to be worried about? You got a hedge around him. He is still your favorite. God goes on and tells him in the second verse, wait, now, and usually when I first read this many, many times, I'm thinking that Satan did all this stuff to Job at one time. You know, after he took his children and his property, he continued to, 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 to attack his body. But that ain't what the word said. The word said that, 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 that man came back again and, Job, and, and, and Satan came back again. Yeah, I saw Job basically with it. I'm careful. Job, yeah, I know he didn't he didn't foolishly charge you, but you know, you didn't let me touch his body. <laughs> he says in the second chapter, in the fifth verse, put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. If you think you'll do that, I'm going to put him in your hand. But don't get him. Look. His body, flesh, was given over to sin. Do what you will. Just don't take his life. And Satan had a part. Yes. The Bible tells us that he had boils, Job had boils on his skin. Had me painful. He said at one point, he rent his clothes, he went and sat down in ashes. And his wife. Like, how do you think they feel? 
You know, I look so bad, I feel so bad that my family won't even look at me. They won't even come see about me. They don't even care enough about me to come and add cold, cold water on my burning head. But God so loved Job. Yeah. To be hung in the see, God knows everything. Yeah. God knew Job's weaknesses. He knew whether Job, Job was going to hang on or not. The right. job for Job was just hang on. Hang on. Yes. We go through things and we think, oh, I, I just can't take it no more. Mm. We forget that with God everything is possible. Yeah. That we don't have a weakness in God. We don't have anything that we can take down with God. When you can't take it anymore, give it to God. Yeah. In the past couple of months, I've been so, I couldn't turn over when I pray in food. Because I knew it was going to hurt. But I gave it to God. God, you got to do this. See, job, the job for Job was to let everybody else know that it's not about the things in life. It's not about the looks. It's not about what you have to go through. It's where you end up. Job was hurt by losing his children. He was hurt by losing his possession. And he was even hurt more by his... The, the, what was going on with his body. Yes. Yes. But Job knew God. Yes. Job knew God. When you're going through... You got to know God. Hallelujah. The job for Job was to tell us, to teach us, mm -hmm. that you got to know God. Yeah. When you're going through, you're not going through by yourself. All right. All right. That old thing that people say, when, you know, when the test is going on, the teacher is silent. Mm -hmm. When Jesus died, God was looking. He could have taken Jesus off the cross. He could have never let him get that. When Job was going through, God could have stopped it at any minute. Yeah. God loved Job. He loved Job enough to say, have you considered yeah. my yeah. servant Job? Yeah. He loved you enough to know that he will never leave you nor yeah. forsake yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. God is God. Yeah. At any point and at any time, he is still God. Yeah. No matter what you're going through, God is still God. Yeah. He doesn't change. Amen. Job 14 chapters. 14 verse. Job asks a question. If a man dies, shall he live again? In the days of my appointed time. All the days of my appointed time. Yeah. Yeah. Will I wait till my change yeah. comes? Yeah. Hallelujah. All the Thank days of my appointed time. If a man die, shall he live again? This is the Old Testament before Jesus Christ. The New Testament. 2 Corinthians 8, 5 and 8 read. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Yes. If a man die, shall he live again? Yes, he shall live again in the presence of the Lord. Job knew that God was God. No matter what my future may hold, I know who holds my future. No matter what this body goes through, I know who holds the body. And I know that the soul returns from what you take. God is God. Thank you, Lord. There is uh, Thank you, Lord. I don't think I gave this to people. God gave me this. Luke 12, chapter 18, 48 verses. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of Christ. Shall be beaten with 
two stripes. For unto whosoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask more. Paraphrasing, to whom much is given, much is required. Yes, Lord. You can't stand before God's people and be chosen before God's people and think it's me. Oh, you can't Amen. stand up and say that I'm a preacher, I'm a teacher, I'm a pastor, I'm a deacon and think that you ain't going to go through something. Amen. You can't stand before God's people and think that God is not going to require your soul for lying, lying to them, for leading them down the wrong path. From whom, for whom much is given, much is required. God requires us yes. to stand on the word. He requires yes. of us to be upright. He requires of us to be that light that cannot be hidden under a bushel. He requires yes. of us yes. to live a life that others may see His work in us. Yes. If God can't use you, then Satan will use you. Amen. If God can't If you think God can't, then who can? If you think that God can't heal, if God can't keep you, then who can? If you think that God won't help you, then who can? Moreover, who will? People will use you till they get what they want, and then they'll throw you aside like wasted paper or wasted trash. But God said, you're mine. I take you into a royal family, royal priesthood. Yes. Job. You know one thing about Job? When it was all over and said and done, Job had more than he started. But Job also had what he started with. He had a God. At one point, Job thought, questioned in God. Why, you know, I'm out there minding my own business doing what, what I'm supposed to be doing. And I don't know why he did it. Folks go, go friend come around me. Come on. Y'all know how friends are. Well, I see Pastor, what he's going to do. I wonder what he done did. <laughs> well, I'm sure that Pastor has done something. Let's go over there and find out what he did. Go over there, sit down with him for a while, be quiet then. Well, Pastor, I see you going to, uh, who was she? All right. <laughs> oh, no, I, oh, yeah, you know, uh, well, Pastor, what you think? Come on, you can tell us. Mm -hmm. Joe's friends thought for sure that he had come sin, just like yours, when you're going through that thing. Like right. Well, the Pastor had all them operations in that little time. Surely he's doing something. He got, y'all know, he done something. I don't know what it is. We're going to go over there and tell you. We're going to find out. Somebody going to tell you. Somebody know. My wife told me one time that one of her friends, it's, they know actually somebody she met in, the, in, the, in a beauty shop or someplace. Started talking about Trinity. I don't know nothing about them. I, 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 they doing something over there. We, we just don't know. We'll, <laughs> we'll find out. I tell you, come on. Come on. We preaching over here. We telling about the goodness of the Lord over here. I see all these people and all these men and women on, on, on Facebook, on, the, on, the, on the TV and talking about how great a preacher they are, how, how great that this is, that is. Let me tell you something. There's nothing great about me. God took me from farther down than I want to you and put me where I am. And when I leave here, I'm leaving here with what I came to. A God. I'm leaving here with what he gave me. The Holy Spirit. I'm leaving here with the confidence that I can do nothing without Him. But with Him, yeah. it's all possible. Y'all yeah. don't understand. Y'all haven't had that to be where I've been. 
But keep living. Yes. Keep living. You're going to need to know this. You're going to need to know God for yourself. Amen. It doesn't matter what you drive. doesn't matter where you lay your head. It matters where you put your trust. I don't put my trust in the president. I don't put my trust in the, the sheriff, the, the county commission. I put my trust in Jesus Christ. The author and finisher of my faith. Because without Christ, that was a job for Job. And that's a job for each and every one of us. We've got to live a life so people see the Christ in us. You know, Paul, in everything that he went through, Paul said he thought it not fevery to live like Christ. When you look at them, all the going into the nice out there, good thing. Saul, when you put it that way. But he made himself low when he found Christ. Why are you hanging out with them? I have seen people, Christians, that go missionaries, good time churches, that will go to Russia, that will go to South America and take clothes and do things for people down there, but they go cross the street to feed somebody that's starving in their neighborhood. We have to start where we are. If you are here in Lisbon, you ain't got anything that's going to Meridian trying to help somebody. Then you got people all around here that need your help. Job was a man. We are men and women of God. We have to work like we are men and women of God. Job had a God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to sit down with God. See, I said it in the uh, Y'all need to know. That was a job for Job. Job's job then is the same job, job that ours is now. Trust and believe. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what's going on, no matter whether you understand what's going on or not, if you trust God, then you should wait on God. All right. Job went through all these things, and it wasn't like it one day. I don't know, the Bible doesn't tell you whether it was days apart, weeks apart. We know that Job lost all his family, his son. Then he lost the property. One right after the other. And later on, his body was attacked. You know, I'm not late. But Job never gave up on God. At one point, I thought he was giving up on his wife. <laughs> But he never gave up on God. I want to leave you with this. Don't give up on God. But do you understand what's going on in your life? In your family's life? On your job? Don't give up on God. The Lord knows and He cares what's going on with you. 